Hey there, it's Derek from Pacific Coast Auto here, and this is a 1974 Honda Life Step Van. Now, these are kind of iconic cars nowadays. In fact, Honda even has a uh, N wagon that is made to look like the iconic looks of this little 1974 teeny car. It's a K car back when K cars first started. Nowadays, a K car has a 660cc turbo engine. This is a 360cc air-cooled, basically 30 horsepower, teeny little engine with a four-speed manual transmission. The car takes a lot from the original Minis in terms of design. It's front-wheel drive. Unlike the N360, it has a gearbox that's separate from the engine. It doesn't use the engine oil like the Mini did. But yeah, I mean, I'm getting a bit ahead of myself. This one was bought from a dealer here in Japan, Flex Auto. And then uh, we're going to be exporting this to somebody in the USA. Very cool little sewing machine engine. Looks like you can grab your hand in there and just pick it up. It has a timing belt, which in 1974 was uh, something that not many engines had. Typically they would have a timing chain. I don't know if it's an interference engine. Of course it's a carbureted engine. And yeah, air cooled. And so the heater system runs off of the heat of the exhaust. <laughs> Might be a little bit <laughs> smelly uh, compared to modern cars. Okay, uh, let's close the engine room here. Uh, the engine running condition is good, but it seems like the carburetor needs a little, uh, just a little bit of a tune-up, you know, make sure that it's not all gummy and it'll run properly. Uh, if you step on it, you get the typical carburetor kind of stutter before it starts revving. Have a listen. Okay, never mind that. So once it's warmed up, it's better. You can hear a bit of an exhaust leak there, but nothing really to worry about there. Going to give it, uh, or turn the engine off. Since it's an old car, it's uh, good to rev the engine while you turn it off. Have a listen. And that has to do with making sure you don't flood the engine. Especially when it's cold, don't turn off a carbureted engine. Just like an RX-7. Okay, so, condition-wise, well, the car has a lot of paint fade, areas that have been rust repaired and not particularly done very well. But it is an old car, and it is a cool car, and it comes from Flex Auto, which is a, uh, you know, a famous dealer here in Japan uh, for their classic cars. I have to say that uh, I'd really like a body that is in better condition uh, than this, if they're not going to say that it has a lot of repair marks on it. There's really not that much rust. It's more just evidence of where the rust used to be. Let me see if I can find you something. Here's a good example. And I'll continue with the walk around in a sec. See the cracks here? Those are cracks in the body filler and some rust underneath. But um, when a car has been fixed with body filler, it gives it this kind of a wavy look to it, a non-metallic kind of look. And the car has that on pretty much all of the panels. And then the roof has a number of dents in it. Now from afar you don't notice that, and because the car is so unique and cool and, you know, 1974-ish, it distracts a lot from the condition of the body. If you see this driving around, your first thought is going to be like, why is that still on the road? What is that? Especially in North America. I don't think that we ever got these in North America. Um, I know we got the N360 and the N600 uh, in the USA. I'm not too sure about Canada where I come from, so I guess I can't say that we got it. But I think these wagons might have been exclusive to Japan. And boy, does it look cool. It's very simple, which means that it would be very easy to restore if you ever wanted to restore anything on it. Um, and I love that front end with the signal lights over the headlights. Just like the new version of the N-Wagon, or N-Wagon, W-G-N is how they spell it. I like also how behind the headlights, there's nothing, it's just metal in there. And then we put the headlights here, and we put the tires here, and you get a car. And this wasn't much cheaper than a Civic. A Civic was, uh, well, obviously uh, very popular worldwide for the first gen Civic, which I think came after this, maybe 72 or 74. Um, the N360, actually this is the N N Honda Life Step, step van 
which is based off of the N360, but a van version. The N360 was 350,000 yen. The N wagon was 400,000 yen. The Civic was 400,000 yen. So the same price as the Civic. I'll come back to the body in just a sec. Just gonna show you the interior here. Very simple and Spartan. It is a riot to drive. It is so much different than anything else on the road. It's just a box with an engine, an air-cooled two-cylinder, manual transmission. It's not really that slow either. This is 600 kilograms. I can't stop talk talking about it. I'm supposed to be checking the condition. Uh, 600 kilograms and 30 horsepower. The original Mini, at least the one that I had, the 1972, was 650 or 680 kilograms and 37 horsepower. And so it's not gonna be that much different in all honesty. What a cool little car. Okay, so let's stop getting distracted and take a look at the condition. So starting up here, we got little bits of rust here, the roof, a number of dents along the, the uh, that area. I'm not sure why. Rain guards. A bit, a bit of surface rust in here. It looks like it's been restored at one point, but a little bit in there, not as much as you'd think. And then the rain comes down here, and then there's a body line here, I guess it's supposed to keep the rain going down. Got a bit of a scuff there. Bumpers have been painted body color, and it's this metallic blue color that, um, to be honest, I'd prefer to have a color that is more original, but to each their own. Love that front face and the teeny little grill. That grill is like, well, I was going to say it's the size of something that is also very small, but I can't think of anything. You can see the radiator clearly in there and then the uh, heat exchanger there that pulls heat from the exhaust header and puts it into the intake for when the engine is cold. Did you notice the hinges on the hood are on the outside of the hood? Love it. Now the uh, windshield gasket piece, it's cracked front and rear, has a bit of rust in this area here. Mirrors have kind of a body filler pitting in them. And going down and like uh, taking a look at the side panels here, I got another video for the side panel specifically and so that's going to be more representative of the condition. But notice that there is bubbles of rust down there. The sills and the underside all look pretty good. Which is nice. A lot of times people are going to neglect the underside and there will be holes in it or something. That doesn't look like the case. Tinted windows have gone bad. Inside the wheel wells has been painted with like a textured paint. But there are no holes or any troubles in there that I can see. And that's good. Look at this, the leaf springs come all the way out to the end of the bumper. So if you got rear-ended, they're going to mess up your suspension. I guess that's not why, or why we don't have that kind of suspension so much anymore. But this gives you your teeny little rear overhang. Look at that. And then you want to have a long spring there for better comfort in the suspension. The back door doesn't quite close properly. We also have some paint cracks there. A little bit of rust in here and then marks of body filler up here as well. This is older than me by 10 years so yeah 47 years old 48 years old I don't know I'm 38 right now. Can carry 300 kilograms. <laughs> I wonder how slow it would be and look at this just like the original minis has the reverse light separate from the tail lights. Uh, in the minis, they changed that for, I think, the Mark III to put the reverse lights together with the taillights. I bet it's good on gas. It is a teeny little engine. There you go. Now let's have a look at the interior. First off, this section here. All the door handles and the door locks all work. There's a gasket here. All four of the doors have a separation here because the gaskets have shrunk and they all feel really old, but it should be a pretty easy type of gasket to find a replacement for. But this one on the driver's side is the worst. It has some ribbing here and then some missing bits here. And that goes basically all the way down. Now the inside of the doors, I'm not seeing any damage on them. They're generally pretty good. You can see rust repairs have been done to them. 
And then it looks like uh, somebody put an extra uh, sheet of plastic on here. So that's, that's nice to keep your vinyl in good shape. And that is the original vinyl by the look of it. Okay, crank style windows. Look at that. Back when your uh, A pillars are so small. Nowadays, A pillars for, for crash safety reasons are a lot thicker and harder to see through. I grew up with 1970s cars and so whenever when I got my first modern car I was like I can't see anything out of this. Okay so it has no carpet in it and then some carpet squares have been cut to fit. Also the gas pedal is like a weird little lever on the floor. Look at that. Now it is a carbureted car, so when you get into it, you have to remember how much fuel is in your carburetor float. So if you haven't driven it for a while, you have to pump the gas pedal a few times. And uh, if you're getting into it when it's still warm, you don't have to do that, or you can flood the engine. So <laughs> it's, a, I guess, the kind of time where if you haven't driven a carbureted car before, you need to go look up on the internet how to manage a carbureted car. Both the seats have a little rip right here and there's some overspray on both seats in the same location from a repaint. There's a jack in there. Original seats, which are a plus. Something like this, very easy for someone to put in aftermarket seats sometime in the last you know, 20 or 30 years because the seats are hard to maintain. You can open up this and there's stuff inside. I'm not sure exactly what it is. Uh, let's do this one-handed on the video. Yeah, no power steering, but it's very, very light to steer. Okay, has a cool gauge set there. Carbon fiber, oh, not original. And then this one's your glove box, take a look. That's so cool. And it's completely flat if you wanted to put something on it, um, like, a drink, I guess. There are no cup holders. There's a clock. There's a heater. Obviously, there's no AC. And when you sit in it, it's small. And say goodbye to your knees if you ever got into an accident. This, ow! Uh, and so please do take care when you're driving something like this. I feel like something like this car is harder to get into an accident in. You're going to be driving it carefully and slowly basically all the time and um, people are going to notice it and so we'll be less likely to hit you for that reason I suspect okay long throw shifter look at this first second third fourth and reverse and then this is still movable while you're in gear which is kind of weird but uh, it's, it's really not that hard to do that. It's probably easier than your average Mini is. Back seats. It's tiny. Less room than an original Mini, I would say. And it might be easier to rest your feet on here, actually. Now it looks like the seats were originally supposed to be able to flip, but the function doesn't work anymore, it looks like. And yeah, headliner's been replaced by this with its own little, uh, you know, crazy lamp. And, ooh, you can smoke cigarettes. 1974 Japan, literally everybody smoked cigarettes back then. Yeah, so this one here, you can see it can come detached from there. I bet you in an accident that detaches itself. <laughs> um, but even if you detach it, this seat can't flip all the way down. It looks like something weird has happened to prevent that from happening. Now you can see it's hinged down here and it's actually not attached to anything on the bottom cushion there, but you can't flip the bottom cushion forward like you should be able to, I think because something has bent uh, or broken. The floor doesn't have any holes in it, which is easy to notice when you don't have any carpets in it. Okay. And let's go into the back. 
So the dampers on the back don't hold this up fully anymore. And it has a little tailgate, which is really cool. Pull this up. Tailgate style. Now, once you get those dampers there repaired, you can sit down, enjoy your coffee, hipster style, in your old Japanese van. And these are secure. You'd be able to put your weight onto this and sit on it. A decent amount of space in here. You know, we're comparing this to the original Mini. This is about five or six times more space than an original Mini in it. And so, in that respect, thumbs up. And it has that headliner on the side too, you can see. And it looks like tire ho the tire houses don't take up too much space in the back here. So, very cool. Put this up. Uh, or not. How are we going to do this? Okay, and yeah, even if you give this a good push, it still sticks up. So I'm not sure what's going on there. Tires, 10 inch tire, and they're 145-65 R10. So good luck getting tires anywhere in the world, really. Um, but uh, they are 2003 with a good amount of tread on them. Should still be good. I suspect something like this would be parked at like uh, some shop or something as a display piece and not really used that often. The tires look like they've barely taken on any tread at all, tread wear at all, since 2003. Okay, so cute little Honda, something different for the channel. I suspect this is the only time we'll ever have something like this on here. So I hope you enjoyed that. Thank you everyone for watching and have a nice day.